Hey guys, we have some really big news for phase two of Season of Discovery. Blizzard has put out a post about all the upcoming changes and updates for phase two. Now, if you want to check this post out yourself, I will have it linked down below in the description box, but we're going to breeze over it and have a quick look at some of the major changes. So let's get right into this. All right, so they also have a video that will go over the phase two preview. So if you want to watch that, I'll also link that down below in the description box. Let's get right into the first big news, a look at the Noma Gone Raid Dungeon. So obviously it's going to be level 40. It's going to be a 10 man raid and there's going to be six bosses. Really nice. I'm glad that they did another 10 man raid instead of going a like 20 man raid or a 25 man raid. This would be really good. You'll be able to get a lot of groups going for this. So five of the bosses have been redesigned and we have one brand new boss for the raid. I'm super stoked that they brought a brand new boss into the raid. As you can see right here, this will present new challenges within the raid dungeon. So I really look forward to this. This also will introduce a new world buff. So we're going to get another new world buff for completing this raid. There will be a variety of new items and rewards with even more epic rewards from additional sources beyond the last two bosses of the dungeon. There will also be new class sets to acquire and quests, quests and rewards adjusted for level 40 players. That's really good. Players will also be able to undertake a new profession quest chain leading to new materials players can use to craft more powerful items. Ooh, this might be a really good opportunity to make some gold. I did skim through this and I think alchemy is going to have a few things that we can make a decent amount of gold from. So that might be a really good thing to take advantage of and make some really good gold early on in phase two. As a compromise for both leading edge players and casual players, the dungeon will become available with the launch of phase two. So the first day of launch two will actually be able to do the raid. I thought they were gonna hold this back for like a week or so so everyone could level up. But by the looks of it, as soon as phase two launches, the raid is going to be open. Um, let's keep on going. But there will be two lockouts on the normal weekly lockout timer. So the same as BFD. Um, so that's gonna be really good. The first reset will occur on February the 13th and the second Oh wait, is it going to be a weekly a weekly thing? So not like BFD, it's going to be once a week. So back to how it normally is. Then the next reset will be on the 20th of February um, with the regular schedule maintenance. This will allow leading edge players to get level 40 and start their hunt in the raid dungeon right away. But also minimize the number of lockouts missed for those who level more slowly boss updates oh they've got like a nice little different thing for the boss right here all right so let's have a look at some of the items that we can actually get from the new raid so as they say right here there's some of the previous items from the dungeon that have just been upgraded um, with quality of life improvements so like the druid the druid mace They've actually made this, I believe, so it doesn't have charges. So once you get it, you only need to farm one of these instead of going out and farming like 10 of these for your feral to do the best possible damage. So there's a bunch of really good gear here. Let's keep on going down. Um, additional items. We've also tucked in some fun items as well into the raid dungeon. So what do we have here? Oh, we've got some trinkets, two different trinkets that do some different things. And then we also have a cloth helm with one armor. The words deal with it. Hmm, I wonder what this will be used for. Maybe it does some sort of damage. We'll have to wait and find out and see. So then we also have the item sets. We have also the sets, which will have their own bonuses once we get the sets. That is really nice, I'm glad that we see that. What else do we have here? Dungeon updates. Oh, we have some quality of life upgrades to the classes, and these actually won't take rune slots. 
So what do we have here? So for Paladins, we have Enhanced Blessing. I'm guessing this will make the blessings a longer buff so we don't have to redo it every five minutes. That will become really, really useful. For Shamans, we have Tomatic Projection. And then for Rogues, we have um, Redirect. So these aren't going to actually take up rune slots. They're just going to be additional moves that we're going to be able to get by the looks of it from looting mobs um, drops from various creatures in the five player dungeons so that is nice oh here we have the runes the new rune abilities this is going to be very inter interesting so for druids we have eclipse we all know what eclipse does this is going to make the damage a lot better for them we also have kings of the jun jungle fundamentally changes your tiger's fury and increases the physical damage you deal by 15% oh this will be very very useful it will give a decent amount of damage and now it has a 30 second cooldown and we've also got the paladin runes now if you want to go over these rooms a bit more in detail um, like I said I will link this post down below in the description box I might even make a video going in depth about each of these but for the paladins we have this right here shelf of light and also guarded by light for the hunters we have melee specialization well this will be very interesting so people can um make their dream melee hunter builds and they also are giving us trap launcher trap launcher is actually going to be huge we've got warriors runes we got rallying cry and we also have blood surge uh, moving on, we have the Rogue Runes, Shuriken's Toss, so we've got a ranged ability for the Rogues, which gives combo points, that's really good. And we also have Master of Subtility, um, what does this actually do? Um, attacks made while in stealth, and for 6 seconds after breaking stealth causes an additional 10% damage, so you can do some nice burst damage. As soon as you come out of stealth we have the priest runes we have mind spike this is going to be really good and then we also have pain suppression pain suppression is going to be really really overpowered really it reduces the damage taken by 40 percent that is going to be really really good for priests what do we have for the warlocks we have invocation and dance of the wicked Mages, oh I'm excited to see the mages, this is what I plan on playing mostly in phase 2. We have Missile Barrage, this is going to be huge, we really really needed that. And we also have Chromo Static Preservation, what does this do? Fuses a arcane fire and frost magic to freeze chromatic energy into a stored state for later use. You can hold this energy for up to 15 seconds before it combusts and expires. When unleashed, heals a friendly target for 665 to 995. So another healing move. Uh, this is going to be really good for all the healing mages out there. This will actually become really, really in handy. I wonder if we can use this on demand or if we have to wait for the 15 seconds to expire, then it does a heal. Or if we can just straight away actually use the heal after getting the charge that'll be very very interesting shaman runes what have we got spirit of the alpha well they're actually getting three different runes mellow storm weapon spirit of the alpha and two-handed mastery well the pvp updates this will be interesting so pvp updates beware the blood moon so i'm guessing this is the new pvp event that we're going to actually get um so it's going to happen every three hours and the duration is going to be for 30 minutes during this event killing players will allow you to earn currency which can be traded for various rewards while you can still group up with your alliance with your allies for the event the blood moon is a is a harsh mist Miss Stretch and will be punished for
for those in raid groups. Ooh, so no big raid groups when doing this. You're probably going to be doing this in groups of five or solo. It's going to be very, very different. PvP awards. We've got some new PvP awards. That's actually really cool. So we've got a new fingers, a new finger, like a new ring. And we also have a new one-handed mace. This ring is going to be really good for casters, especially for mages. Really good for mages. Ooh, two new mounts. This will give a bit of um, variety to the mounts that we can have at level 40. And this one right here, this raptor is actually sick. This is an awesome mount. So two new mounts right here. That's actually going to be really good. And I'm guessing we get them um, from reputation from the new PvP event, I'm guessing. Oh, PvP updates. This has got to do with the BGs, I'm pretty sure. Um, additional adjustments are coming to matchmaking. While we understand that it can be frustrating for solo players to match against pre-made groups, we want to be careful about impacting queues, so the queue times. To address this, we have in implemented two changes. Players in groups of five or fewer will have a higher chance to be matched against groups of five or fewer. Likewise, if you have a group of six or more, you will have a higher chance to match with groups of six or more. Oh, that's going to be really, really good. So basically what's going to happen now, in my ideas, there's going to be people mid-maxing five-man groups. So you have your five-man pre-made, and then there'll be five other either random queued people or other groups that are inside of your 10 man group for the for the BGs. So this is definitely going to help. Um, I'm guessing they couldn't just have it so you can only solo queue because that will affect the queue times too much. So then if you want to do a full like 10 man pre-made, you're going to be more than likely queued against other pre-mades that have six to 10 people in their pre-made. So this will actually really, really help out. I wonder what the queue times are going to be and how this will be affected. Ashenvale updates. Ashenvale will be moving to a three hour timer as well in phase two. The weekly quest world buff will not apply to players after 39. That's good, so they can't stack. You won't be required to go back and do the Ashenvale quest, weekly quest, to actually get that world buff. You won't be able to use it once you're level 40. Profession updates. Players will be able to discover approximately 20 new recipes. Wow. Across all non-gathering professions. This includes recipes for alchemy, enchanting, engineering, along with leatherworking, tailoring, and blacksmithing. Professions will cap at level 225. That is what we all guessed, so that is perfect. Um, this will be really good for everyone's investments and stuff that's already pre-brought all their investments. So their cap is going to be level 20. Well, well, 25 skill for phase two, which is perfect. Just like phase one, players will be able to undertake a epic quest chain to unlock access. No spoilers though. Ooh. Right, recipes will also include some new materials that will be able to, that will that players will be able to find throughout the game and trade with others. Oh, trade with others. We're going to be able to sell these on the auction house. I'm pretty sure. There's going to be a big gold making opportunity for these new items. I already know it because they're going to be new to the game. And by the looks of it, if they're going to be used in some of the epic crafts, they're probably going to be used a lot and be worth a lot of gold. So that keep an eye out on these items. Probably going to be a good way to make a lot of gold. So what have we got right here? We've got a male hood. So these are all the, the head pieces. So we've got a male, we've got a cloth, and we've got a plate. Um, so whatever class, whatever type that you wear, you're obviously going to need the correct uh, profession to be able to craft your new level 40 epic piece. Alchemies and Enchanters will find a couple new recipes which can bring more ut utility and throughout into their, into their own gameplay rather than simply creating things that can use and sell to make a little extra gold. For an example, what can they make?
So this is enchanting. What does this actually do? You gain an enhanced sigil of intervention, empowering you to deal up to 20 increased damage and healing. This can be used and applied outside of combat 30 minutes. So basically a buff for enchanters, an epic buff. And then also for alchemy, there's going to be a new pot. So maybe if we can sell this pot, you'd be able to make a lot of gold from actually being one of the first persons to create this pot and actually sell it up on the auction house if it is sellable on the auction house, which I'm pretty sure it will be. Um, so this, this pot will actually be used a lot, restores. Uh, mana and it also restores health and also increases attack power by 40 and damage done by spell power so it's attack power and spell power for 15 seconds oh this is going to be used by everyone i'm pretty sure people that don't even need the mana or the health are just going to be popping this to get that increased attack power and the increased spell power oh this might be it might actually be really worth going um alchemy to make some gold selling these. Whoa, I didn't expect this one right here. No more GDKP runs. Oh God, they're putting the lockdown on the GDKPs. We, we are experimenting with a new policy which will no longer allow GDKP runs. Oh, some people are gonna be mad about this one. In Season of Discovery. Well, we understand that there are some benefits for those who find this a convenient way to gear, to gain gear. We also recognize that there are concerns surrounding the traditional guilds and social structure that are a part of the spirit of Season of Discovery. Given the experimental nature of Season of Discovery, we want to try things without this type of transaction taking place in the game. With the launch on February 8th, we will be restricting this activity. We'll have more information to share on our official channels and we'll be monitoring feedback closely. Okay, no more GDKPs. Wow, I did not expect that one. That's actually, that's huge. That's going to be good, obviously good for the game. Um, a lot of people did make gold for GDKPs, but obviously the, RM, the RMT part of the GDKPs is bad. Um, did not expect that whatsoever. So I think, I think that is honestly a good take and a good change for the game in the long run. I really, I really do. It's not too late to join Season of Discovery. For players looking to catch up with their friends above level 25, we will be implementing a 50% experience bar for players between level one and 25, a 50%. Players will also see an increase in experience gains gained within the Black Fathoms Depth Raid Dungeon when it is cleared. The Raid Dungeon will still continue to run with a current lockout timer, and players will no longer be able to gain the world buff beyond level 39, however. Ooh, 20, uh, 50% experience buff in between level 1 and 25. That is going to be so quick to actually level from level 1 to 25. Really, really quick. That's very interesting. And obviously, we're going to be able to get probably a decent amount of experience from completing a BFD. But it's still in the same lockout. So every three days while you're leveling, you'll be able to do this. It's probably going to be a big chunk of experience though. And probably worth doing um, for the gear and obviously the experience. So we'll probably see a bunch of BFD raids while everyone is leveling through phase two. The waylaid suppliers will also see an adjustment. We will share more, more later on, but there will be a significant increase in experience gained from them on turn in. Oh, Jesus. For all them people that stocked up on the waylaid supply crates for the chance that they can use them to actually level, you guys, by the sounds of it, are going to get increased experience. So it's probably going to be a crazy way to actually level very fast. Like for an example, some people, like No Hit Jerome, I believe, he has 
he's been working on collecting these so he's probably going to get a bunch of experience from turning these in so that's very interesting thanks for reading and watching we look forward to joining you on the challenges ahead when phase two goes live on february 8th at 1 p.m pst time all right awesome so some really really good updates and news for phase two if you want to go ahead and read this yourself and go over this a bit more in detail i will have a link to this post and also to their video that they made about the the preview for phase two let me know down in the comments um, if you're happy with these updates and with these changes um, if there's any changes that you're not happy with or that you're are really happy with let me know down in the comments i'd love to know a big thing is going to be no more gdkps this was this was really unexpected i didn't didn't think they would do this um, let me know in the comments what you think about this honestly i think it is probably better for the game if they do this um, saying that a lot of legitimate people though did make some good gold by doing gdkp runs and it was a good way to make some gold um, but yeah let me know down in the comments what you think um, about this or so very very exciting also if you enjoyed this video let me know um, down in the comments if you did and also hit a thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel for seasonal discovery gold making and flipping videos till the next one guys